Hey, welcome into the Bronco and the Pig. It is Cooper, your host, and I'm always here with my sister Delaney, my trainee, my sports trainee, the Bronco. And uh, we are here into the later end, uh, the later weeks of February, coming up on March. Uh, Delaney, how how are you doing? How's the weather out in Boise? It's actually pretty nice. It was sunny yeah. on my walk over to the library today. Yeah, so it's That's been good. good. That is good. Um, we we've had quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of sports. With I, we were talking about it earlier. It's a lot of smaller stories today. Uh, today that we're going to talk about. It's a lot of smaller stuff. A lot of dramatic things. Uh, <laughs> I feel like is going on. Um, we are not big NBA fans. We are not big NHL fans. We are big fo- uh, NFL football, baseball. And college basketball, that's kind of our three go-tos. So we're in that little dead period where football just ended, baseball's getting ready to start, and college basketball is in full swing as we approach March and March Madness. Um, but it, it, like we're for us, it's kind of that dead, like that dead zone of the year. But yeah, yesterday I believe. Spring training started. Spring training mm-hmm. is just getting started. And so there's a lot of baseball talk, a lot of hype around baseball. And I feel like it's it's just an exciting time when baseball comes back. And opening day is March 28th. So we're about a month away from opening day. Are you excited for baseball, Delaney? <laughs> I guess as excited as I'll ever be. Yeah. <laughs> So we have an interesting, you know, dynamic here. We are, uh, we are born and raised Southern California. So we are huge Halo fans and, (laughs) but our father is from Baltimore and we were, we were taught to love Baltimore sports. So we're also big Oriole fans. Now they both have sucked for so long (laughs) that we deserve a championship. The Bronco and the pig deserves a baseball championship this year. (laughs) Well, I'm going to jump right in to our uh, our our stories of the week, and I'm actually going to go to one that I thought was uh, pretty cool, um, and it's kind of a what are the odds moment, one in a million moment. Um, Mr. Ellie De La Cruz, a outfielder, or sorry, a third baseman for the Cincinnati Reds, he was playing against his teammate Hunter Green. Uh, they were doing live batting practice. And he hit a foul ball, and it hit Hunter Green's car and smashed his window. <laughs> Delaney, did you see? Did you see this? Did you see all this crazy talk about this? I did see it, and I feel like it's important to mention that I'm pretty sure the car that was hit was like a Rolls. What is it called? A Rolls Royce. Yeah. Like it. It was a. It's a nice car. No, that's so a. That's. <laughs> that's a hefty. That's a hefty cost right there for Ellie. I know. Yeah. Now they. They're probably the two best players on Cincinnati, mm-hmm. if I'm being honest. Um, so I think they're okay on cash. But <laughs> I I just thought, like, what is, I'm, first of all, I love spring training because it kind of brings these monster athletes back down to reality because they're playing in, like, these, you know, back backyard sports complexes. And oh. they're, not in these, they're not in these huge stadiums or anything. Uh, they play in like fields in like a park, so. Oh, uh, I love that! I didn't yeah. know that was like a good thing. Yeah, so in spring training, they play games in stadiums mm-hmm. so that fan mm-hmm. they can you know sell tickets and fans can come and all that stuff. But they practice mm-hmm. and they do live batting practice. And they they work out as a team and they practice in like it would be like if you went down to the park and there's a baseball field there. Like the, oh. the Los Angeles or the Anaheim Angels will will be having batting practice down down the street. It's huh. it's kind of cool. So this kind of brings that back because I mean, if you're playing in a stadium or practicing in a stadium, you're I guarantee Mike Trout's car is not being parked where it could get hit by foul balls. Okay, <laughs> True. so I I love this story. I thought it was pretty cool and. Uh, Luckily, they're both good sports about it. They are teammates, so that makes it a little better. But I saw I'm, that they I'm, were like, they were joking about it, which I liked. But like yeah. me personally, I would be pissed off. 
I would, I would be really mad. So props to them for being able to make a joke out of it. Yeah. So I love baseball. We love baseball and it's in full swing. Uh, Spring training is is gearing up and ready to go. And like I said, yesterday was kind of the first day for spring training. Our second story of the week comes, and I'm going to actually combine two stories here because they're kind of the same. They're the same sport, and mm-hmm. they they don't really affect each other, but they're about the same kind of thing. So in college football, now I know it's not football season, but we're going to talk about college football. They came out and they – Next year is the new playoffs. It's a new playoff standings, 12 teams. It's a big deal. You know, everyone's all hyped. Well, they announced that they're changing the format. Still going to be 12 teams, but five automatic bids are now it instead of six because the Pac-12 has kind of just disintegrated. Um, And Mm -hmm. that, I think that's good. I think that's good. Did you do any research on the playoffs? Not really, but what do you mean when, like, what does it mean when a team gets a bid? See, to me, that so, means, like, a, a pass, like a freebie, you know? So the way it works is there's 12 teams. There's 12 teams that make the playoff, mm-hmm. and they there are five, what are called five automatic bids and then seven at-large bids, okay? So the five okay. automatic bids go to the teams that won the conference. So if – You have the Big Ten Conference, who is like Michigan, Ohio State, uh, Purdue, uh, Maryland, all these teams. There's, I I think it's up Mm -hmm. to 18 teams now. It's called the Big Ten. Um, The winner of that conference, whoever won the conference championship game, automatically goes to the playoff. So they Mm -hmm. are in no matter what. So they're one of the five teams. Well... What they were trying to do was it would be the five major conferences. So you have Big Ten, Big 12, the SEC, the ACC, and the Pac-12. So their goal was to make those five conferences get an automatic bid. And then okay. then they would give an automatic bid to a small team. That was that was the first initial plan. So they, they could mm-hmm. – they it was six and six so six automatic six at large and it'd be the five big conferences and then a small conference and then six at large and at large is just the next best six teams whoever the next best teams yeah. are um but because of what happened last year packed the pac 12 which is like arizona arizona state ucla usc those schools the the pacific uh conference it kind of just just got destroyed all the teams left. They they went to the different conference. They're like, ah, screw this. We're going over there. Oh, um, oh that kind of sucks. Yeah. So they changed it to now mm-hmm. only the four big conferences because there's no longer five big conferences. There's only four. Get a bid and and then a small conference gets a bid. So now it's five and seven. Oh, okay. So they changed it. it they kind of changed it around. We have like bids and dance. So now I, I get it. I can relate. Gotcha. I understand and, what you're saying better. Yeah, and when you talk about March Madness to bring college basketball into this, that's what they call it. They get an automatic bid and an at large. So it's the same it's the same format except college basketball is 68 teams whereas yeah. college football is only 12. So in I don't college... understand are they able to be going back and forth between five bids and six bids like or do you um, think because this year they'll keep it at five bids? So there's a lot of there's a lot of speculation on what's going to happen because mm. they want college football has gotten so big that I think that what's going to end up happening is they're just going to create a college football league. Like it's going to kind of be like the NFL where you have how, however many teams that you want. It's probably going to be a lot more than NFL. It'll be I don't know, uh, probably 50 teams, maybe 60. And mm-hmm. they, they're they just going to create divisions and then the divisions and they're going to have a playoff and the best teams play each other. That's what it's going to turn into, I think. But right now, they're just kind of, they're trying to like work it the best that they can with the way it's set up now. And they're kind of yeah. forming into this league, but 
Um, I do like that idea of like what you said with like combining a college division and like making regions and they compete against each other because I think it will make it more fun, like kind of more well, interesting, I think. The the cool thing about college football is there's so many teams. There's so many. Hmm. And what what I think they should do is they need to make like five division or five leagues of 12 and make it like the west, the east, mm-hmm. the south, the north, the central and like just split it up by region and then you just like take the winners or the best teams in each division or each league yeah. and put them in the playoff and they all play against each other. That, the, just organize it. Now I know a lot of it is mm-hmm. has to do with money and like bro, like TV, but I think you just got to organize it a little better cuz right now yeah. like the Atlantic Division who's like North Carolina and Duke and like uh Clemson, like way out east they just added two more teams. Guess who they are? Cal and Stanford. Like they're, they're <laughs> yeah. all the way over here. Like, why, why, why did you oh, add them? Funny. You know. So it's like I, I don't really get it, but it's it's the way they're doing it. And they're kind of just making it work. Mm, I see. But that brings us into kind of the second part of what I was saying. College football. This came out. Sometime around the Super Bowl, but uh, the teaser actually came out last week. College football video game. Now, I know you're not a big gamer. I know you're not a big video mm-hmm. game person, but I am. I, I like my video <laughs> games. And let me tell you, I don't think there's ever been a sports video game as hyped as the new college football <laughs> video game. Okay. Really? Are you going to get into video games at all? You know... I this is so stupid. I call myself a gamer because I play Roblox on my computer. But that's not <laughs> the, the um no. I don't know. The college football like those type of games, I don't know. Oh well college football this they they teased it a little bit. So your homework for next week is go on and and watch like old college football video game clips because they used to have like little <laughs> yeah. things that you could do you could play as the mascots and like the, the oh that's mascot. sick that i would do yeah that's it and and there's like a whole bunch of game modes and stuff it's a great game and they discontinued it because of the rule that players aren't allowed to be paid anymore well they changed that rule so now they're bringing it back um <clears throat> you know I'm, I'm actually so happy you brought that up about players not being paid and now they are. Because when I first heard you talking about this, I agree the players should be paid if they're featured in the video game. But in my mind, I've always had this like, um, what's the word? like anger <laughs> against college and high school football teams because I feel like they're already so spoiled. Like yeah. they're getting the best facilities. They get like, at least at Boise, they get like super nice housing and like all this stuff and plus scholarships. And I'm like, you don't need another paycheck. You know what I'm saying? I, I agree. I a hundred percent agree. I feel like it's a hard balance for me. I don't know. Yes. And it, and that's that's what the the constant battle has been is well you they deserve to be rewarded for their hard work and all this stuff but they're they're getting free schooling they're getting mm-hmm. you know free gear better housing a lot of time free housing um, they get taken care of by the faci- by the staff and free tutoring, free whatever, you know, and a lot of people feel like that's payment. I agree with you. I think they should be paid like, like rewarded if they're on a, in a commercial or on a TV, Mm -hmm. like on a a billboard or in a video game, whatever the case may be, they should be paid for that, but that's on their own. I don't think they, but that, that is how it's working. They get paid for sponsorships. They can go out and get sponsorships. They're not getting a paycheck. They don't get like mm, a paycheck I from see. the school. So just so that we're clear, 
um mm -hmm. he like for example the the number one and uh college football guy is uh carson williams he's a quarterback for the usc usc he's he was in a dr pepper commercial he got paid for it um yeah, and he's in a bunch. Of, he's got a bunch of other sponsorships that he's getting paid for, but he he doesn't collect a paycheck from USC. It's not like they're paying I see. him. Yeah. Okay. So, well, that was my fault because I misunderstood. But I still like. I don't know. I just have. Like, well, when a when you see stuff, when you see stuff on teams. Yeah, when you see stuff online and it's like, oh, college athletes can now be paid. It means mm -hmm. yeah, they can be paid for their own name like they're not getting yeah. it's not like they're being paid like a job it's more of like a you know i'm sponsoring myself i um, understand does that make mm -hmm. sense okay yeah it does all right let's let's move on because that uh we need to keep on rolling here now as i said before we are not nba nhl fans we're not huge nba fans we are college basketball fans i don't follow women's college basketball but mm -hmm. this is by far the biggest story of the week that I've seen. And I've seen so many, you know, posts and, and, and just analytics and, and what are they called? Freaking articles and whatever you want. Like anything and everything is about Miss Caitlin Clark, the college basketball star for the Iowa Hawkeyes, who will be going pro next year. Um, she broke the all-time women's points record in college basketball. And let me tell you, it is a lot of points, okay? I'm going to have <laughs> you guess. I'm going to have you guess how many points oh, God. Clay Caitlin Clark has uh, in her career. So take a stab at okay. how many points she has. Now, I might mind you. She's been in she's been in college for I think this is her fourth year. So four years in, and this is how many points she has. So go ahead, take a take a guess. I was gonna say 275. 275? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, you're way off. Um <laughs> three thousand five hundred and sixty-nine points in her college basketball career by one player. Oh my god. One player. She is amazing. She averages 32.8 points a game. Every game, she averages 32 points. That's crazy. She, I was so, way off. Yeah, you weren't, you weren't even close. 275. I could get 275 points. <laughs> uh, but 3,000 points is, is incredible. Uh, yeah, that's incredible. Props to her. She will be going to uh, the women's NBA next year i saw that um so you know how steph curry and sabrina don't know how to say her last name did the three-point contest yeah well there's a lot of talk that sabrina don't know how to say her last name is going to team up with uh caitlin clark and uh -huh. it's going to be a 2v2 so the two Ooh. girls against steph curry and then he gets to choose someone that'd be pretty oh, wait, cool that would be fun yeah but uh that's just speculation who knows how, how much truth there is to it <laughs> But yeah, props to Clayton Clark, Caitlin Clark. She is our Suplantation Feast of the Week this week. So a moment of silence for Suplantation really quick. All right. Caitlin Clark killed it. Awesome week. Congrats mm -hmm. to her. We're big fans. Um, she's the only reason I watched... College women's college basketball is to watch her shoot three pointers from the from the center <laughs> court. Okay, uh, but we will continue to move on, and we need to talk about something very serious with with uh, the Bronco the pig. Very very serious topic, and it gets my blood boiling. It is about mm -hmm. our Los Angeles Halos. Oh. And the drama that is going on in the locker room with the with the Anaheim Angels, <laughs> the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim, the longest name in history. Anthony Rendon might be the biggest, uh, nicest nicest word I can think of. Not cussing is <laughs> craphead. The biggest <laughs> craphead I have ever seen in sports. 
Do you know who Anthony Rendon is? And did you do research on this? I don't know who he is, but I saw like his interview compared to Mike Trout's interview. And this and it actually like made me mad. Like I was I was angry when I was looking this up. So Anthony Rendon is the third baseman for the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. They paid him an un- absurd amount of money to be on the team. So he mm-hmm. he won the World Series with the Braves mm-hmm. a couple years ago. Then he signed a contract with the Angels to come play third base. He has gotten hurt every single year. He has never played a full season. He's always gotten hurt in the middle of the year and missed like multiple months of the time. So he's never made it through the whole season. He's an asshole. He keeps he keeps you know causing drama. He got in a fight with fans one game. He he he's a terrible locker room guy. And now he does this interview. I don't even know who did the interview, but he does this interview and now he says baseball is not a priority, it's a job. Baseball does not is not a priority in my life and he doesn't even care about winning he just wants money and like to support his family i get it your family's number one maybe your faith is number two but your job is pretty important and you're paid that much money to play baseball like to play a game a child's game you're like the luckiest man on the planet this actually made me mad and like all the stuff you're saying about like how he can't how he hasn't made it through a full season that just makes me hate him even more and yeah. like the thing that bothered me is like Mike Trout prior to this was like I'm here with the Angels I want to win a World Series with them and he has a family I know he just had a child not that long ago yeah a couple years so ago too. Yeah. I'm like how how is it any different and you're playing I'm sorry but you're playing baseball for a sport for a job and you're getting so much money like i don't know you're it playing makes me a, so angry you're playing a kid's game and you're getting paid millions of dollars to do it like part time of the year exactly sorry that's like, like the greatest so many, job there's so many people out there like begging for his position like i don't know i i can't stand him so so this whole like dramatic little interview and bs crap it made me hate Rendon even more. I can promise you every Angel fan on the planet hates Rendon. But mm-hmm. what it also did was it made me love Mike Trout even more. Like Mike Trout is like <laughs> yeah. the greatest I he's like the greatest you. person of all time. Like I He I, just seemed like such a nice guy, you know? Yeah. And and even if like say Mike Trout's contract ends in a couple years when it ends and he goes and plays somewhere else. I'm going to be like so happy for him. I'm going to be like, you You finally got out of there. Good job, big dog. You did it the right way. Like, I just want him to win so bad. I don't even care if it's for the Angels. He's just such a good person. And yeah, I, I agree. And he's, so, he's, he's a great player, too. He's probably one of the best ever. He's probably a Hall of Famer. But my God, Anthony Rendon makes my blood boil. All right. Well, we'll, we'll stick with the baseball, and uh, we'll move to our next story. So college baseball started yesterday as well. So we didn't just get spring training, but we also got college play- baseball. So there was baseball everywhere. College baseball. I don't really follow college baseball. I enjoy watching it, but I don't follow it. Um, this popped up on my feed, and I hope it popped up on yours because this is the craziest thing I've ever seen by in a baseball. So in a doubleheader, for Sacramento State, they were playing Loyola Marymount, so two very small schools in California. Mm-hmm. A, a, a player named Matt, and I'm going to butcher his last name, Maschi, Maschiangelo, Matt, Matthew Maschiangelo, he was hit by seven pitches. <laughs> he was hit by a pitch seven times in one day. That sounds <laughs> terrible. Did you see this? I didn't see it. And I think the best part was, like, the video I was watching had, like, the announcers to it. And they're yeah. like, oh, he got it again. And, like, yeah. for me, I was... They were so unfazed. 
They were so <laughs> unfazed. Know, they were. They were. They were like, but oh, uh, Masky Angelo. Oh, that's his fifth hit by a pitch of the day. I'm like, five? Five? That's crazy. That is crazy. I'd be pissed after two. I would think, I would start taking it personally after a while. Uh, yeah, like, I would and, think it's something out for me. Well, and to be fair, a couple of them were like, you know, like, nicked his shin and like, they they clearly weren't trying to hit him, but I'd be I not only are you getting hit by a pitch at the college level, mm-hmm. they throw hard, okay? They <laughs> it, it hurts, okay? So not only are you getting hit, but you're also you don't get to hit, you don't get to go, you yeah. just go to first base. So seven, he had eight at bats, seven times of the eight. He went up there and he was standing there and he just got hit by a ball and he just walks down to first base. I'd be like, oh, what a waste That's of That's insane. Day. Yeah. I it, wish I could have seen the crowd when he finally got a hit. Well, I bet if they you just w- blew up. I know. When he didn't get hit by a pitch. I wonder what happened. I didn't even mm-hmm. look. Watch him walk. Yeah, I didn't he, he, he didn't get hit to hit. <laughs> um, but if you rewatch the video, just watch the, mm-hmm. the dugout. Like his dugout, they get they get so happy, like so hyped. It's so awesome. I love it. I love it. It cracks me up. It, it's the craziest thing I've ever seen. Like seven times. Oh my god, insane! All right. Well, moving on. That uh, that concludes our stories. Our favorite stories of the week. Delaney, you're up. Uh, you had a great one last week. You kind of shocked me. Just throwing this this you know this crazy game out there. Delaney, what's your game of the week? I think this one's kind of um, obvious. It's Boise State versus San Jose State basketball game. What you referred to as a, a cupcake game. Yes. And a cupcake game it was. Boise won 82 to 50. Woo! And they didn't even stand a chance. It was so did bad. Did you go? Did you go to the game or did you just watch? I was there for a little bit, yeah. Oh, cool. And was it a blow up from the very get go, or was it like it was close, 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 and then San Jose cupcaked it out? You know, in my I didn't think it was very close the whole time. Yeah, honestly, like it was kind well, of clear that Boise was going to win. Well, as of today, Boise mm-hmm. is in third place in the conference, behind my nice. SDSU Aztecs, who are in second. Um, and Utah State is in first, but good news, Boise State, they came out with the first bracketology, the first bracket prediction, and Boise State is in the bracket. So we oh, could see, yay. We, yeah, we could see a Bronco and Aztec, uh, <laughs> reputation in the, in March Madness. They could be represented. Oh, I hope, I hope they play in March Madness. I think that'll be so much fun. So, unfortunately, you're not allowed to play someone in your conference until, like, no. the, sweet, the Sweet 16. So, they would both have to win two games, and then and then they could play each other. And it has to, like, line up a perfect <sighs> Like, the stars align. I love, I love Boise, but making it to the Sweet 16, I don't feel like it's in their future. But knock on wood. I hope I'm proven wrong. Well, we'll see. We'll see. I'm excited. I'm excited mm-hmm. um, for college basketball. All right. Well, I uh, I'm not surprised that you picked the Broncos as your game of the week, but they did play a cupcake. I was right. Um, San Jose State is <laughs> yeah. not very good, but to win by 32. That's that's big time. Way to go. Mm-hmm. But um, we'll go sport to sport here. The NFL is over, so we don't really have much to talk about. The NFL draft is in April. It's the middle of April. We will uh, we will discuss it when it gets closer to that time because the NFL draft is very interesting this year. Um, but we'll talk a little bit more about it once it comes. But we'll just go straight to MLB. And the MLB, uh, as we touched on it, spring training has officially started. Um, there's still a ton of guys not signed to a team. There's still a ton of players that don't have a team. And the teams are playing. They're started. The games have started. Mm-hmm. This makes me so angry. Okay. I, at this point, I hope they don't. 
pit, like sign the team and they just <laughs> sit out the whole year. Um, yeah. Have you have you put any more thought? I know we talked about this a couple episodes ago. Have you put any more thought about players not signing with the team and games already starting? I Have just. I think it's stupid, like what you said. For me, if I was on the team, if I was already on the team and I'm waiting for these free agents to sign their contract, I would be pissed off. Like, they're missing practice. They're missing, like, all the stuff that people on the team are already doing. And I just – I think it's just greedy and, yeah, I don't like it. I think it's stupid. Well, the the biggest thing with it is it affects those players – that like are fighting for a spot, you know? Mm -hmm. So like they're, they're given everything they have to just be on the team, just to be there. And, and then like, we'll use the angels, for example, they have a guy who is just, he's like right on the cusp and he just wants to be there. He wants to play. He works so hard. He's putting a ton of effort in. Now let's say the angels go and sign someone and they sign one of these big name guys. They're just gonna boot that one dude out. They're just gonna say, "All right, yeah. we gotta make us. We gotta make a spot because we signed him." I just, I just feel so bad for that guy. I feel so bad for that player. You know. Um, mm-hmm. But I, I also know, I in the back of my head, I'm. I gotta say, you know, that's that's part of sports. It's the competitiveness and the the is, difficult of just getting to the show. You know. Is there any sort of deadline? For free agents, no. So it could go literally like mid season. They could sign with a team mm-hmm. a week before the playoffs started if they wanted to. That that's ridiculous. I feel like there needs to be a deadline. There, so to like have your final roster, you know. Yeah. There's trades deadlines and stuff. So mm-hmm. once you sign to a team. Um, and say they trade you, they, you can't be traded like after a certain point, after a certain point in the season. So that is smart, but when it comes to free agents, they're free agents. Like they could, they could, yeah. you know, a team, if they don't yeah. want to sign with anyone and then they sign with someone in July, then that's, that's what they want to do. Like, but the, right now they're not getting paid. They're yeah. not. That, they, well, that's a good point. At least they aren't getting a paycheck. That would really yeah. make me mad. Because you're a free agent. You're not but, like you're not on a. You haven't signed any like sort of contract. Team. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, all right, we'll run through really quick. I'm just going to run through our free agency tracker. Um, it was pretty uneventful this week. There wasn't a ton of signings. I I am a little bummed because two guys got picked up. Two guys did sign, and I kind of wanted the Angels to go after them. Um, they're they're good players, and it's kind of what they needed. But the Phillies, they signed Whit Merrifield. The Diamondbacks signed Grandel Grichik. The Red Sox signed Liam Hendricks. The Brewers re-signed Brandon Woodruff, and the Rays signed Ahmed Rosario. And also a couple days ago, Eric Hosmer announced that he is retiring, which is, uh, you know, props to him. He had a great career. I don't think he's a Hall of Famer, but at this rate, it feels like everybody's getting in the Hall of Fame. (laughs) Uh, But congrats to Liam Hendricks. Delaney, do you know this story about Liam Hendricks? Last year, he was diagnosed with cancer, and he beat cancer, and he came back, and now he's pitching, and he just signed a contract with the Boston Red Sox. So, you know, props oh, to him for making that's awesome. all the way back. Yeah. And he's got, he, he's, did he's he, funny. Wait, yeah. Did he play prior to cancer? Yeah. he Like was he already been, in the league? Yeah. He'd been a reliever. He's a relief pitcher. He's been a reliever for years, maybe, maybe six, seven years. And then he got cancer. He was sat out a year, beat cancer. And now he signed with the, the Red Sox. So. Oh, good for him. Congr- yeah, congrats to him and props to him for making it all the way through and, and beating cancer. So uh, we're big fans. Liam Hendricks and Kay- Caitlin Clark this this episode. Uh, moving on to college basketball. Now, college basketball is getting – it's getting up there. We're getting close. Delaney, how excited are you? We are a week away from March, and March Madness mm-hmm. is going to come in the blink of an eye. How excited are you for March Madness? 
I I'm very excited. I'm just excited to like make my bracket. And yeah. I just want to see Boise in there really bad. Are you um I know we'll talk more about this when it comes, but are you going to go into making your bracket? Do you have like a strategy or <laughs> are you just kind of going to go with like a gut feeling like, oh, the Boise State Broncos are playing, I don't know, Indiana. We got mm, Indiana. Normally normally it's a gut feeling. I like to look at the um I don't know what they're called, like the numbers, you know? Oh, the How, like, Duke is one. Oh, yeah, they're seed. So I'm like, oh, if it's, like, yeah, but... a sixth okay. seed and a seventh seed, I like to go for the underdog, you know? I'll always go well, for the Well, what's the lowest seed. number – what's the lowest seed that you like to go with? Because six and seven, that's not much of a – like, I, I wouldn't know, say. But, um, well, I remember that one year. Wait, what's, <laughs> what's the highest seed or lowest? One, uh, no, one in lowest? 16. One in 16. Okay. I remember, like... 16 has only beaten a 1 twice in history. It's only happened Wasn't twice. It? Ah, I thought there was, like, a bunch of upset games one year. Well, there's... Every year there's upsets. And every year there's some, some crazy, like, a like a 14 comes out and they win, like, five games. Because they got some guy yeah. with a mustache and, he, and he's just <laughs> knocking down threes from the logo. Like, some got random dude. Like, look up... Okay, more homework for you next week. <laughs> Look up Saint okay. Saint Peter's last last year. Saint Peter's. Okay. They're a fifteen mm-hmm. seed. They had some white dude with curly hair and a mustache, and he's just <laughs> just draining threes, and they won like four games. It was awesome. Yeah. I always like the underdog. So underdog yeah. mix with a little bit of gut feeling, I would say, for my March okay. bracket. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Well, it is coming close. Um, some matchups to look forward to, and maybe you want to watch a couple of these for your uh, matchup of the week next week, um, and to prepare yourself for March Madness. But this <laughs> week on Saturday, we have Houston. They're going to take on Baylor. Uh, Alabama is going to take on Kentucky, and Texas is going to take on Kansas. All massive games. Uh, Monday, Baylor is going to take on TCU. So that's a pretty quick turnaround for them. Tuesday, you have BYU and Kansas and Nevada and Colorado State. I looked at Boise State's schedule. More cupcakes. Um, they got a couple cupcakes again this week um, that they need to keep. They need to keep winning. And but next week, final game of the year, they go to San Diego <laughs> to play the Aztecs at Viejas Arena. So. Uh, could be a tough one for them. San Diego State is 12 and 0 at home. They've never lost at home. They've never mm-hmm. lost. And I've worked all of them and I've never seen them lost. <laughs> so, uh it's been a fun year for college basketball. Now my my top 5 teams, uh Yukon did get absolutely smacked last night. Um so they dropped down. Right now I've the number 1 team in the country, I have Houston. I think Houston's really good. I still have UConn at number two, even though they got their their behinds kicked. And uh, our Arizona Wildcats, bear down, baby. <laughs> they are number three. And Purdue at number four. And then f- number five, I had North Carolina sneak in there. Um, it, I feel like my top five right now is pretty consensus because it is it is a pretty big gap between those five teams and everyone else. But that concludes sport to sport and we are winding down here, but we got two more things, really. Our favorite topics. Delaney's mascot of the week. You have been absolutely killing it. What you got for me? <laughs> you know, okay. Last week I said I cheated a little bit. This one kind of is a cheater, too. Because oh. it's a secondary mascot. A secondary? So, it's secondary mascot. So, they have okay. two. So my mascot is King Cake Baby. <laughs> King, King Cake, Cake Baby. Baby. He is a mascot for the New Orleans Pelicans. Oh my god! Horror <laughs> Isn't film. Isn't it scary? I that know, is I the scariest thing. <laughs> King Cake. It kind of made me jump when I first saw it. It's scary. Did you do some research on this? Do they even have a normal mascot, like a pelican? Oh, yeah, there he is. Yeah, I think 
think it is. It's Perry, right? Perry the Pelican is their first mascot. Yep, yep. Oh my god, this is terrifying. (laughs) I know. It's like the New Orleans thing, though. But yeah, King Cake Baby needs a new fit because he's scary. Yeah, um, very scary. Nice find, nice find. But that is two in a row where they're they're not the the real mascot. <laughs> I know. I'm running out of fair. mascots. <laughs> I'll find some. No, it's impossible. You gotta you gotta start thinking outside the box. <laughs> There's so many mascots. So many. Start going into high school. So many mascots. Ooh, that's a good idea. I'll yeah. do that. All right. All right, and then to wrap up our show, as always, our final question of the week. Now I gave this is a pretty typical question. It's not very uh not not super fancy, but it puts up a good debate because <laughs> there are some good answers out there. Delaney, what are your top five best sports movies of all time? Now I have my five and you know what they are because I sent them to you. Okay. But I don't know what yours are, so I'm curious to see what you say. Let me hear your top five. Number one has to be bench warmers. Oh, Hands down. hell yeah. Bench Hands warmers. Down. Great movie. Then I'm going to go. Okay, this is also basic. I'm going to go Sandlot. Two, sport, two baseball. Who, who doesn't like Sandlot? The next one I know you like, and that's Dodgeball. Oh, I didn't even think about that. That's a great movie. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah, nice pull. And then, and then I said Happy Gilmore. Another nice pull. Another nice pull. All of yours are comedies so far. No drama. No drama. Well, then here's your little drama. I think Moneyball is pretty good, but I just think sometimes it's a little boring. I want, I want to laugh. You know. Yeah, I got you. Um, They're all baseball except for dodgeball. And um, Happy Gilmore. That's golf. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I went my my favorite movie is Moneyball by far. Mm-hmm. I think it's the best sports movie. I also have Sandlot number 2. Uh I have The Longest Yard at number 3. I like the one oh, with Adam okay. I like the one with Adam Sandler, not the the first one, but uh yeah. they're both good. I have Rudy number 4. Rudy is mm. one of I've the I've never seen that. Oh my god. And and uh grandfather if you're listening do not cha- do not chastise your granddaughter here for not seeing the movie Rudy about Notre Dame football but uh oh, it's about Notre Dame. okay that makes sense yes then. Rudy and then number 5 is I also have bench warmers I think I think bench warmers was just always on in our house was it not yeah. was it like just always on bench warmers no Happy and we Gilmore had the DVD that that's true. I'm shocked you didn't have dodgeball on there. I didn't think about dodgeball. I didn't think I was trying to go through sports, and I'm like, okay, baseball movies, football movies, mm-hmm. so, like there's not really any soccer movies, but uh, yeah, but there's some there's some other really good sports movies that we kind of left off. You know, Bull Durham is really good. Uh, Major League is awesome. Um, remember the Titans, Coach Carter. You know, hey, if you want to go obscure, you go into the horse racing secretariat is a good movie. Um, there's there's so I'm, many good movies. I'm not going to lie. Literally all those movies you just named, never seen them, haven't even heard of them. Oh, my God. Well, I'm going to send you a list of movies to watch um, <laughs> after this because <laughs> there are so many good sports movies out there. All right, well, that concludes our episode of Bronco and the Pig. It's been another great week of sports. We are looking forward to March Madness as it creeps ever closer, as well as the start of baseball season. And um, as we said, spring spring training has kicked off, so baseball is up and underway. Thank you for listening. We appreciate the, sp- uh, the support for the podcast and um, – we look forward to hearing hearing your top five favorite movies um, of all time, sports movies. Thanks again. <laughs> Peace. <laughs>